This is biology paper 2, the year 2020, and uh, it's not the GCE paper, but an internal one. Um, let's go to question 1. All I want to say is that they don't really care about... Oh, they, they, oh okay, it's on. So question 1 reads, Table 1 shows cells and tissues found in living things. So it's our table, tissue, the red blood cell, xylem, blah, 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 blah. Okay, number A. Uh, from table one, identify a plant tissue. Oh, a plant cell, a plant cell. Palisade is a plant cell. Any other plant cell that we have here, root hair cell is a plant cell. They haven't said cells, they've said cells, so I've just written one. Animal cell, I can easily go for a spermatozoa cell. Sperma means seed, so sperm cell. Um, RBC, but they've just said cell. Number three, a tissue whose function is to cover and protect plants from mechanical damage and infections. Epidermal tissue. Epidermal tissue, okay. Uh, epidermal tissue is simply, above here, these are cells. Down here are cells, are simply tissue. And uh, this tissue covers, therefore, epidermis means upper, upper layer. Uh, there's also inner uh, endoderma and all that, but... Uh, four, a tissue whose function is to transport water and dissolved mineral salts in plants, the xylem tissue. The xylem. The xylem transports material upwards only, okay, and the phloem transports material which is plant made and modified uh, throughout the plant. Therefore, the movement of materials in the plant in the phloem is up and down, but for the xylem, it's just upward. A cell found in the reproductive system, the sperm cell, okay, the sperm cell. In which tissue are the following cells found? Red blood cells, blood tissue, palisade cell, leaf mesophyll tissue, okay. Do we have this here? Leaf mesophyll? No, no, no. This is just now you're applying now. So number C, uh, name one organ found in a plant. A leaf in a, is an organ. A flower is an organ. A root is an organ. So a leaf here then in animals, kidney, heart, liver. Uh, those are organs. Brain, eye, okay. They're organs. Nine marks is ours. Whoop, whoop. Um, two shows the concentration of various substances in blood plasma, glomerular refrigerant, and urine. This is from the topic of uh, uh, excretion. Name the process responsible for the formation of glomerular filtrate, ultrafiltration. Okay, glomerular filtrate is formed when there is pressure in the glomerulus, which is caused by you know flow of blood from the afferent artery. So, ultrafiltration. Which of the substances in table two above does not pass through the glomerulus during filtration? Protein. Protein do, does not part. Amino salt, I mean amino acids, some glucose and ions do pass, but they are reabsorbed. Urea also passes. So in this table, proteins are only one which doesn't pass. The proteins are big. Three, give a reason for your answer in one A to above. Its percentage is zero in the filtrate and urine. So you check out from here, glomerular filtrate zero, zero. It's not passing it. But in plasma, it's eight, it's a lot. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. So we get to B. Explain why the concentration of urea in the glomerular filtrate is much less than the concentration in, of urea in urine. Explain why concentration of urea in the glomerular filtrate is much less than the concentration of um, uh, urea in the urine. Uh, because the water content is less in urine. Okay. They left one single line. But why is the water content less? It's because water is reabsorbed, but the urea is not reabsorbed. So the urea tends to be high in concentration because of the reduction of water in the in the in the what? In the urine. So you observe here glomerular filtrate, this is less in urine, this is more. 0 0.04, 2.0, man, 2.0. Um the last question there is um outline the internal structure of the kidney. I really had to scratch my head on this one because I had to start thinking of where should I start from? Should I start from the pelvis or should I start from the capsule? Should I start from the blood? Where? So you have to really think and organize your work properly because look, there are four marks here. So I hope I got as much marks as possible in here, but it has an outer cortex. Okay, I began from the outer cover. A medulla region in the middle and the renal pelvis. The pelvis. Nerves and blood vessels enter and exit the kidney via the pelvis. The ureta also ex exits via the pelvis okay um yes that was my my way of answering because they left three lines and i, I feel this suffices in the general structure of the kidney we we'll move to the next question uh question three uh, shows uh stages in the life cycle of a house fly 
I don't like flies. They are so stubborn. You know, if you allow them, they can even walk around your eye, on your, you know, on your conjunctiva, enter your nose. I don't know what's up with these guys. Identify stages P and R. P, that's your, these are eggs, lover, pupa, imago, or adult fly. But hey, P is for eggs, R is for pupa. These guys are active in lover stage. They are dormant here. Here they have to eat and become fat. Because if they don't eat and become fat, when they go into, when they form this cocoon, they will actually die at this stage because they, were, they didn't eat much or they'll be, they'll hatch or come out of the piparium as very small and, uh, you know, uh, malnourished flies, young flies. Uh, which stage is useful in the decomposition of matter? Q, because they eat a lot here. Which stage, stage is involved in the spreading of disease? S, my man, S. They fly, they walk. They do all sorts of gymnastics. Number C, state two diseases in which house in which a house fly is a vector: cholera and typhoid. These are, these two are waterborne diseases. And since these guys don't have proper mouths, instead they just have these parts that help them suck decomposed juice, okay, organic juice from decomposed matter. They are very effective uh, spreading agents or vectors of waterborne diseases. Number D, explain how a mosquito is similar to a housefly in terms of life cycle. Both undergo the egg, uh, larva, pupa, adult stages. I didn't know how to approach this, but they both undergo these stages of, um, uh, I would say, some kind of metamorphosis. Number two, they both spread diseases. They are both vectors. Okay, they are both vectors. Though they differ, uh, the fly is a mechanical vector, a mosquito is a biological. A fly is a mechanical vector in the sense that it carries disease on its body, while a mosquito carries the, the parasite in its body, so it's a biological uh, vector. Number E, explain one way by which a house fly can lead to the spread of cholera by sitting on cholera infested too, then onto uncovered food, just like that. And you'll be all, uh, you know, it, it will be down here for whoever eats this uncovered food. So we're done with question nine. Okay, so that was question four. I meant we're done with the nine marks. Uh, show the structure of two neurons. These are neurons, but you can also call them nerve cells. Don't just say nerves, because a nerve is a bundle of neurons. So one neuron, I mean, a bundle of neurons make a nerve. So you can still call one as a nerve cell, not just nerve. So identify the two neurons in the figure. This one is your motor, this one is your relay or inter, okay? This one is an effector, the other name is effector neuron, okay? Effector, the other one is inter, inter neuron. Uh, state, um, state the functions of part, parts P and Q in the neuron. So this is your part P, and they're saying also Q. So this is the sheath, the mailing sheath, and then these are um, dendrites, okay? They are dendrites. Uh, these are dendrites, they're, 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 and these these are dendrons, okay? Uh, let's go to the thingy here, P, to synapse with um, other neurons in the ne central nervous system. Where is our P? Our P is here, so this neuron can simply synapse with um, other neurons, and also with effector um, organs, okay, with also, also, with effector organs like muscles and other endocrine organs for example then q to insulate the axon of the neuron okay the male in sheath okay the schwann cells to insulate the axon of the neuron number b what do you understand by the term reflex action an involuntary uh, reaction to stimuli which is neither simple or conditioned okay an involuntary reaction to stimuli which is neither, which is either, okay, not a, not neither, but either simple or conditioned. Therefore, a reaction which is very simple or which is conditioned like riding a bicycle or driving a car. That's a conditioned um, a stim, uh, a reflex. You're driving a car and you're not really memorizing. I think you're not thinking too hard, but you're rolling. Number two, give an example of a, a reflex action. Say sneezing. Sneezing is an example of a cranial reflex, but there are many types of reflex actions. 
Number three, describe the pathway, uh, the path taken by an impulse from the receptor to the effector. Firstly, it, first, firstly, it's generated by the sensory neuron, it's supposed to be it's here. Therefore, the impulse is firstly generated by the sensory neuron, passed to the relay, then uh, the motor neuron, uh, which touches the effector. That is the pathway. We have our nine marks. If we have failed any question hits, we're going to get 8.9 marks. Um, question five, which is the last question here in section A of this paper. A1, state the number of sex chromosomes in the nucleus of a somatic cell of the human body. There are two. A somatic cell is any other cell apart from the, uh, the gametes, the sex cells. So there are two. Um, what is hemophilia? A disorder in which, in which blood does not clot normally or does not clot easily. Okay. Uh, it's a genetic disorder in which blood does not clot easily or normally. Number B, using a genetic diagram, explain how normal parents for hemophilia can have a son who is hemophilic, hemophiliac. Use uh, X to the H and X to the small letter H to represent the dominant and recessive alleles uh, respectively. So we'll get the father and mother. How can the two have a, a child who's their normal parents, meaning they are carriers? So the only way they could be carriers is when, if they are heterozygous dominant in terms of their gen, genotype. So this is the heterozygous dominant combination. Dominant recessive, dominant recessive. When you do a crossing, this one will be a hemophilic free. This one will be a carrier, normal clotting, normal clotting. But this one here will be hemophilic. And this is the only way you can have parents that are not hemophilic and get to have a child who is hemophilic. This marks the end of our section a of this paper uh, i hope to see you in the section the following sections i'm just posting because the exams are nearby and uh, we need to revise so i'll post as many as possible but the next one should be section c for this paper or even any other paper um bye bye for now and uh, remember to subscribe and share this with your colleagues who are in grade 12 and writing this year um adios